Hey guys, today we'll do a deep dive into one of my favorite Space Marine chapters, the Blood Angels, and learn how to play them competitively, specifically in their Sons of Sanguinius detachment, but we'll also touch on the Gladiators as well, so without further ado, let's dive right in. And nowadays you don't really have to have a Blood Angels army to run them, you can just have a couple of named characters and use your normal generic Space Marine models as the Blood Angels, which that's how I run them with my Death Watch. First let's look at their strength, so they are Space Marines, meaning that they get access to Oath of Moments, so we can designate one target for reroll to hit every turn and also the internal synergy of the units that we have in the Space Marine book. The best part about them is that they have a host of great and efficient units that they bring to the table, the ones specifically that we're lacking is Space Marines. Great characters and great unique melee units. We'll discuss them in more detail in the next sections of the video. The detachment itself, the Sons of Sanguinius, provides us with about 90% of everything that we would want as a melee force. And it's a lot for a detachment, it's a very good result. We get, first of all, a ton of added damage output, that's obviously very good for melee. Making pretty much any unit that has any close combat weapons pretty dangerous. Namely, it's plus one attack and plus two strength on the charge, so plus one attack is obviously great because we just get more dice to roll, and plus two strength means that we will be sometimes wounding things much better than we expected to. Because adding two to the strength characteristic really jumps us up in the wound brackets. Also have quite a lot of basic utility that's carried from the Gladys detachment into the Sons of Sanguinius, like the two CP fight on death and also one CP fall back and charge. Fight on death is extremely important for melee armies because you can essentially get double the efficiency from your particular unit if you had to send them on a mission and kill something and then you understand that the only thing that can interact with them is a melee unit that will probably kill them on the charge. It's very good to keep 2CP in your pocket so you can make that your squad essentially do another turn of fighting before they go down. And of course falling back and charge is probably the most important thing for a melee army. It's I would say even more important tactically than advancing and charging because advancing and charging is just increasing your threat range where tactically when you are able to disengage from combat and charge again it gives you first of all other targets that you would not be able to interact with with this in this turn otherwise and also it reactivates your fight first so choosing between the two falling back and charge and advance and charging i would definitely choose fall back and charge in most cases what about the weaknesses as is traditional for the blood angels the only really thing that's missing from the detachment is at the same time probably the most important characteristic as a whole for a melee army which is speed i know i just said that falling back and charging is more important than advancing and charging but hear me out you can have have speed from other sources like having jump back infantry, having transports, where if your army as a whole doesn't have a capability to fall back and charge, that will limit you severely. So that's what I meant. The Blood Angels always were this kind of uh, heavy hitting force that had to really jump through hoops to get the speed and white scars were always a space marine army that had the most speed but less damage output i'm not surprised that we have the similar kind of situation now we don't get any extra speed whatsoever from the detachment or from the named characters apart from maybe dante and most of the speed will come from the units themselves this detachment would be pretty much perfect in my opinion if we had advanced and charge capability say we could replace the angelic sacrifice strategy with the advance and charge threat. But I am sure the GW have specifically decided not to give them that because that would make Sansa Sanguinius an absolute auto take. But now we actually have an interesting choice between what we want. Do we want to go Gladius where we have the advance and charge capability and funnily enough the Gladius is faster as a detachment than the Sansa Sanguinius or just a whole ton of output that we get with the Blood Angels detachment. We do get the 6 inch consolidate which you could technically say that's added speed and that that's a cool thing to have in your pocket, but that's a very niche one because we can only engage, get into engagement range with this consolidate, not onto objective. So it's uh, not as good as just a flat six inch consolidate. However, don't worry yet, because now we're going to talk about how we can compose an army and with some sensible units choices, I'm pretty sure we can get over the lack of added speed if we build the list correct. So let's look at that. As always, I want to remind you about my Patreon 40k coaching service. If you're looking for help building 
building your competitive rosters, preparing you for tournaments, or have any questions about your collection in general, check out the links for my Patreon in the description. Thank you. First thing we need to figure out is who is going to be our main punch element, because that's probably where most of our points will lie in the army, and it's quite obvious that our best choice in almost all cases is going to be some sort of jump pack infantry. They are fast because of the 12 inch move, they go through walls, which is very important and essentially increases their actual threat range in real life, and also they're quite easy to hide because unlike dreadnoughts and uh, vehicles and land raiders, they don't have a huge footprint. We have quite a few options here, we can go for either jump pack death company, which is a great option, we get full rerolls to hit with them, so they are quite accurate, and if you give them power fists, they will be rerolling all their 3 plus hit rolls, so it means that you'll probably be hitting with almost everything, they also reroll charges innately, so you won't be spending command points to reroll the charge, you'll also always be able to have that second try. Also get 6 plus fill no pain on them, which is important for 2 wound models, so any, when you're attacked by a 2 damage gun or 2 damage melee, uh, it's not an automatic kill if you fail a save. We also have a choice of jump pack intercessors, which these guys are very cheap. So the jump pack death company are 28 points per model, where the jump pack intercessors are only 16. Much, much cheaper, but of course the output is different. So they don't have the power fist, they only have chain swords. So you need to add some characters to them to really up their damage. And they have also the mortal wound output ability. When they charge for every model with an engagement range, you can roll a dice on the four up, you do a mortal wound. Very useful ability and actually actually increases their efficiency quite a lot. We also have a couple of interesting options. We have the Sanguinary Guards, so they are even more expensive than the Death Company. Namely 155 points compared to 140 for the Death Company. And they are still toughness for uh, Marines. They do have 2 plus save, which helps. They also have the Ankar Mine Blades for damage too, but the strength there is quite low. It's supposed to be more durable because they have minus 1 to hit and minus 1 to wound in melee, but that's in melee. So if you are being shot at, it doesn't really help you at all. You have to lead them with your Warlord, so that also adds a little element of complexity if you want to get that minus one to wound. So I'm not sure you really want to go for the Sanguinary Guard for now, but let's wait and see what we have as a release, and I expect them to be updated in the near future, so definitely don't go buying a bunch of Sanguinary Guard for now, and when they are released anew, I think their rules will also change. Another cool one is the Vanguard the Veterans. I've just released a top five Weird Units, Weird Space Marine Units video, and I've included them there, because Vanguard Vets are a very curious case. If you run them correctly, and we'll discuss that in the synergy section, they can actually be quite interesting. Stay tuned and we'll discuss them in detail. We can also use land raiders and impulsors as our sort of second wave of infantry because a land raider, my main problem with the land raider is that it's quite big. So on a lot of terrain setups, it will be hard to fit it through walls or through paths in between walls. It's not fun to have a 260 points model with a unit inside blocked by a couple of walls when you just cannot go through them. But of course you get so much output from those flamers and the assault cannons and the added speed that you get uh, allowing you to carry not only jump pack but normal infantry into fray. It's very important so I also can recommend it easily. For this role assault intercessors are great. The blade guard as well are quite good especially considering the plus one strength and plus plus two strength sorry and plus one attack that you get from the detachment so their swords will be strength seven meaning that they will be wounding things much much better and death company marines as well they're also quite good the their reroll charge that the jump back ones get is replaced by the ability to have sustain hits if they are below starting strength and sustain hits too if they're below half strength if you have a bunch of those baby marines in your collection they can also work pretty well instead of say assault intercept or you can go for Assault Centurions as well. They are also nice. They are great against vehicles and monsters. And of course, with extra attack that you get and extra strength, they'll be wounding things much better. They will be strength 12 instead of strength 10. So wounding almost any vehicle on threes or fours in case of toughness 12. Do have access to one CP lance and lethal hits uh, for Red Rampage, but having proper characters with the squads I just named is going to be quite important. Chaplains and captains are very
very useful. Chaplain's obviously for plus one to wound in case of jump back chaplain that you can run with the jump back intercessor. So he can provide his own mortal wound output on each whenever he fights essentially on the four plus he does d3 mortals and the squad itself will do a couple of mortal wounds. So it's an interesting combination. The captain, depending on which version it is, is it captain on foot? Then he fights better himself with the once per game super saiyan mode or the jump back captain he provides plus one strength so you can get your chain sword assault intercessors on jump backs up to strength seven which is mad and of course free red rampage is also very useful so you can always activate those lethal hits and lands there is also a niche application for the secondary priest for the five plus fill no pain and my extra ap minus one and judiciar for the fights first so saying priest is something for the intercessors with their lower ap and judiciar is pretty much great for anyone when you've already solved all your AP problems. For example, the Blade Guard would love to have Judiciar with them because they will really benefit from the fights first and they can still get Lance and Lethals from the Red Rampage. You still want to have shooting in your list. As always, we like to run balanced lists because if you are a melee army, sometimes you just cannot reach as far as you want to and there is a very annoying tank there standing and shooting at your stuff and you don't want that to continue happening. So currently your best choices for shooting are the Gladiator Lancer for your normal anti-tank, anti-monster role and the Vindicator for a bit of a mixed kind of shooting output which can do well against both elite infantry, monsters and vehicles. And scepters are also great and very important for reaching heavily screened gun emplacements. So like for example if there is an artillery piece hiding behind the wall and really enjoy just sending a squad of three or maybe six in scepters there it will be very hard for your opponent to screen them with a three inch dip strike and then they can take out that artillery piece yes they will probably be countercharged and maybe even killed but it's not guaranteed considering they are toughness six and three wounds each so it's not that easy to kill them uh, and they've already done their job plus they can also double as a move block pretty well because again if you can deep strike within three inches of your opponent you can essentially appear in a spot where they really didn't want you to appear eradicators are also great at picking off tanks even though we don't have the fire discipline enhancement in this detachment but still the problem is the delivery so unless you're running librarian dreadnought which has a very cool ability to essentially heat your unit up the board teleport a unit of infantry infantry up the board the same problem actually with the devastator centurions i would not recommend running eradicators in the sons of sanguinius you have the librarian dreadnought you can think about maybe running them because then your problem of mobility for these units will be partially solved as an interesting option for you to add is the death company dreadnought that is is pretty good against monsters and vehicles with his talons or fists i will probably run the fists but the most important element is that he has plus two to charge against monsters and vehicles so you can really use him as this mad dog you send to hunt the enemy monsters best named characters are the lemartis and the sanguinor we are going to talk about them more in the name character section we still need all the normal elements of the space marine list here so we're not skipping all our chaff units our skirmish units for chaff we want some to hold the home objective and do missions for us so it's a, it needs to be something cheap and hopefully potentially something fast so scouts are perfect for that intercessors are great because they have the sticky objectives rule or you can just run the salt intercessors if you have if you want to have even cheaper squad than the normal intercessors and maybe some fighting capability if something decides to uh, pop up in the back line and charge your home objective scoring union. Combi weapon lieutenant is great because he provides you with reroll ones to wound on one objective in a game and he can also reactively move if something comes too close so he's not a bad option for your home objective either and his low knob protects him from artillery. Infiltrators are great obviously because they provide protection from deep striking units and for skirmish units we want something to go after after your opponent's chaff, which can be jump back intercessors as the best skirmish unit scouts partially because they are much better with their output in the Sons of Sanguinius and Outriders are pretty much not bad. The only problem with them is that you're not going to really benefit from their automatic six inch advance because you cannot advance and charge into this detachment as we discussed. Now the special characters. So here are five that I really wanted to us to talk about. And as you can see, I've screwed up the name for the Marty. So he's not Dante. The first one is the Marty. He's 120 points 
Williams and his unnamed chaplain option. He's extremely valuable for just two reasons. He obviously fights quite well in combat, something like, I think, five attacks, at strength six, AP two, damage two. Why you want to run him is actually you minus one damage for your death company and minus one damage on a two wound model with fill no pain is extremely good because if you're being attacked by damage three, it would have been pretty much automatic death for your units otherwise, but now it's damage two weapon and then you have your six plus fill no pain and who knows what happens. If you're attacked by damage two, then it's essentially damage one and then it's extremely inefficient against you, especially considering the potential for a fill no pain. So a very good defensive ability and you also get lethal hits on the squad. So your numerous 30 attacks with the power fist that you get with the 10 man squad will also get to reroll hit rolls and you'll get a couple of chances to roll those sixes and get to the wounding stage faster. Dante is in my opinion pretty much an auto take. If you're planning to run a 10 man unit of death company, you really want to have at least some chaplain with them because you want them to be able to fall back and want them to have OC. So it's either Dante or the jump back chaplain. Jump back chaplain is cool with plus one to wound mortals, but lethal hits and minus one damage is better. Next is the Sanguinor. He is our lone up choice. He has a 12 inch move. He has fly. He can turn up from reserves into combat, right into combat, whenever Blood Angels units are charged and he has fights first. So when he does that, he'll get to use all of his might to strike down the enemies of the Emperor before the enemies of the Emperor get to fight. He does fight quite well with eight attacks, a strength six, AP three, damage two with devastating wounds. He has an aura of rerolls of battle shock and leadership as well. So so he will be providing a little cool buff for your army and it will be very useful against detachments like Dread Talons with, them, with the Chaos Space Marines or perhaps the Battleshock Bomb that the Tyranians like to run with the Neuroelectors. He costs 140 points and is in my opinion an absolute auto take because of his utility, especially if you run the Gladius and then when he pops up into combat he fights and he can then fall back with your Tactical Doctrine and go 12 inches and charge something else or if he freed up your unit he gets to move 12 inches and potentially you can spend a CPU for him to advance and charge. So he is a very fast and very annoying character. He also is 7 wounds, 2 plus save, 4 plus invulnerable save. He's not that easy to kill and you need to find a way to kill him because he's a lone op, so it's not easy. Next is brother Corbulo or Corbulo. I'm not sure. I hope he doesn't mind me butchering his name. He is our named Sanguinary Priest who costs 15 points less than the normal Sanguinary Priest and for that we get plus 1 attack instead of plus one AP, which is a slight nerf slash side grade for most applications. And you still get the five plus fill no pain that you would always get from the secondary piece. So if you are planning to run a five or sorry, a 10 man unit of assault intercessors with a secondary priest on foot, and you don't have enough points to run the normal secondary priest, you might want to consider Brother Corbulo, especially if you're running Gladius, where you get the honor of the chapter for plus one AP. So you can, in a pinch, get that extra AP if you really need it. Next is Mephiston. He's our named librarian. He has the same four plus fill no pain against psychic attacks. He grunts fights first to his squad and he can lead pretty much assault intercessors because everything else he can lead is not a fighty unit. He also on the two plus applies a minus one weapon skill modifier to an enemy unit that he fights and also on a six if he rolls a six it's minus one attack and minus one weapon skill. My problem with Mephiston is yes he fights quite well with six attacks strength nine AP three damage d3 with his Vitarius but the buff he provides for the unit for the hundred points he costs he, you can get the same buff with the Judiciar so why would you run Mephiston? and just for his extra attacks, I'm not sure he is worth it. Especially when we have such great characters like the Sanguinary Priest who provides us with two the things that we really want, which is durability and output. And lastly, Dante, the actual Dante, not the Dante I have in the first one. <laughs> so Commander provides his unit with plus one to hit and plus one to the charge rolls. He's one of few things in the entire Space Marine book that provides any kind of plus one to charge. For now, he forces a battle shock test within six inches of himself at the start of the fight phase, which it, it can be quite well considering he also uh, applies the minus one to the leadership modifier, modifier to that battle shock test, I should say. 
He cannot join that company, unfortunately, but otherwise he can join all the normal jump back units. So secondary guard, jump back intercessors, and Vanguard vets. He fights with eight attacks, strength seven, AP three, damage two, and lethal hit. So very similar profile to Sanguinor, very very fighty character, and he's just a beautiful model all by himself. I really love how they resculpted him. Problem is that do you really want to spend 120 points for a character to lead even your Vanguard vets or assault intercessors on jump backs? If you can do the same with just a chaplain who will be providing you with actual bonus of plus one to wound instead of plus one to hit, which is obviously less important. So they need to do something about Dante to make him more interesting. And I think they will do that whenever the Blood Angels book comes out with the new Sanguinary Guard. Let's look at the synergies. So first interesting combo is the Assault Intercessors with the Sanguinary Priest. So they get plus one to the AP and also five plus feel no pain. And they go inside a Land Raider Redeemer. You get a base of 40 attacks hitting on threes. Obviously it's 50 attacks on the charge with potential for full rerolls from Oath and full rerolls to wound when you are uh, fighting against the unit on an objective. One CP Red Rampage you would also get Lance and Lethal Hits and this would kill about five Terminators on the charge for essentially just one CP and a character. Next are the Vanguard Vets. So they're actually not that bad in the Sons of Sanguinius if you run them with a Sanguinary Priest. Pretty much Sanguinary Priest solves their biggest issue which is the AP1 and if you run them in Sons or Gladius, you'll get that bonus for their output, which is what they actually needed. But for Gladius, it's obviously on the chapter and also advancing and charging. For Sons, it's just a whole ton of attacks and extra strength. They will get five attacks each on the charge and strength seven on their swords or whatever they have. Plus, in terms of durability, they'll have four plus invulnerable save and five plus fill no pain for defense. So that's a very hard target now to crack. So if you want a unit of jump back infantry, they are still fast, still deadly, but also a bit more durable than the normal intercessors or even the death company yeah, i suggest you look at the vanguard vets keep in mind that the inferno pistols that you run, can run on the death company can also reroll hit rolls thanks to the black rage ability because it doesn't specify only melee attacks surprisingly but when you're up close to your opponent before the charge you can really soften up your target getting 10 shots of strength 8 ap 4 damage d3 plus 2 if you're in melted range which is 3 inches but that's very much possible if you are uh, jump back infantry which they are and you reroll all hit rolls so not bad to maybe like kill a couple of terminators before charging in and finishing off a squad oh and by the way if you're planning to run the firestorm even though it's not the topic of our discussion today there is a very cool thing you, there are a couple of actually very cool things you can do there with the transports and just death company jumping out of transports and doing stuff but one thing i really like is running death company 10 death company with a captain and then spending two cp to have devastating wounds on their hand flamers so you can just roast pretty much any target whatsoever because that's 10 d6 hits still not the output of aggressors obviously without twin link but still not bad at all there are also quite a few tricks you can do with transports there as well so it's an interesting alternative option if you're not interested in sons of sanguinius and want to try something else rapid ingressing one crazy death company dreadnought into your opponent's lines is a cool idea as well you can put him in reserves then spend that one cp to get him on the table in your opponent's movement phase turn two and then have an eight inch moving dreadnought which can also get plus two to the charge roll when he's charging vehicles and monsters and he also fights every time he is fought against or shot at so he's very cool and lastly the best enhancements are 15 points visage of death and 20 points artisan of war which is a shadow of its former glory but still a cool one so the first one halves oc of the enemies within engagement range so very useful for 15 points to flip objectives more easily and also the second one gives the bearer plus one ap and save it used to give a bunch of rerolls if i remember correctly in ninth edition but plus one ap on the weapon and plus one save so two plus armor it's not bad at all oh as always here is the roster example for the sons of sanguinius detachment we have lemartis which is the warlord he leads a 10-man unit of death company marines with jump packs and they're obviously equipped with power fists and inferno pistols we have two sanguinary priests with jump packs each costing a whopping 100 points but i think it's worth it they are attached each to a 10-man unit of assault intercessors with jump packs or just intercessors with jump backs. We have a three man Centurion Assault Squad inside the Land Raider Redeemer. Another five man unit of Assault Intercessors with jump backs to be our skirmish unit and just jump around without any character support, but they don't really need it. We do have Sanguinor, of course, here. We have two Gladiator Lancers to provide us with good shooting support against monsters and vehicles and finishing off that with 
two five-man scout squads, one to sit in the home objective and one to do secondaries for us. And that is 2,000 points exactly. Let me know what you think about the Blood Angels. Do you run them in Gladius or do you run them in the Sons of Sangrini's detachment? And do you think that the advancing charge is that important for them? Let me know in the comment section below and thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.